Hi everyone, welcome back. Brand new day, brand new video. I want to begin by sending you my love, my gratitude for tuning in, for being part of this experience um, during this very eventful period. We have a, a new moon that this is being recorded on the new moon itself. It's uh, a night of a lot of inspiration, knowledge coming through. It's you know feel quite energetic, um, riveting in terms of sensations and so on. So. I hope you're feeling the same and I don't know when you'll be listening to this, when this will be uploaded, but it really feels like the month of March is giving us a new breath um, after so long and such um, monumental ups and downs of the last few months. So today the video is again in audio format. Um, I thought I would mix it up. It's also nice just to talk to um, the microphone and have your thoughts to yourself instead of standing here staring to a camera. A different uh, interface which is nice and today i wanted to bring up uh, something that's been asked of me by uh, a few a few clients lately i've gotten some decent amount of emails and of course it's extremely important because you know we're all born of a mother and raised by parents hopefully somewhere across the planet so we're going to be discussing parenting because it's so 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 important as we you know a lot of us are um, products of our environment and in a lot of instances the the parenting has been deeply dysfunctional because the individuals were not necessarily ready to bring up a child so they made well you know mistakes are obviously part of the equation but they made a lot of miscalculations and a lot of projections of ego there's a lot of narcissism involved and so on so i know that any parent that is awakening to a new reality and unraveling themselves and relinquishing a lot of the baggage that they carry really doesn't want to have their child and you're the same so there's a kind of a number of um, i'm not going to call them footnotes bullet points that i really want to touch on here that i believe will be beneficial and you can be the judge of that in the comments and so on um, of course i invite you to subscribe to indigo light wherever you're watching this um, Activate the little bell thingy on the for the notifications tab so you can be notified when there's a new video, a new post. Of course, share, comment, like, and so on and so forth, just for the YouTube algorithm so others can find out about this and get the help they, they need and deserve with what's going on at the moment. So to the topic of parenting, it's very beguiling in many ways to be a parent because you have the dichotomy of the physical manifestation of your child as they grow up, you know, from uh, infant to adult, hopefully. And, and then you have the spiritual side of it all. And you, are, you, you really have to decide to position yourself in the center and to be able to, to view both sides of the coin. What I mean by that is, you know, you begin life and you have this perception, of course, as you hold your baby in your arms. This is not something I've been, um, you know, able to do yet. So I'm not going to judge or to pretend like I know. It's not something I like doing. But, you know, there is this, this motherly and this fatherly instinct that kicks in, obviously, when you hold your infant in your arms after they're being born. And all the feelings that flood over you and all of these things. And that's an amazing thing. Okay creating a life, being part of this amazing genesis of, of incorporating the spirit into the body and so on and so forth. Okay, so there is the feeling of the vulnerability of the child and the fallibility of the child as it learns how to evolve on its own and so on and so forth. That's one perception and therein your motherly instincts kick in. Okay, your fatherly instincts kick in and you really want to try to protect the child, want to try to give them all the tools that you did not have, the tools that you deem necessary. And of course, that's a beautiful thing and it's welcomed. But the other side of the equation that we have to consider now is that when you look at your child, there are two perceptions. There's the physical and what is beyond. So there's the, the physical envelope of your, ba of, your bobby, of your baby, sorry, of your child, which is limited. It's small in stature, especially at the beginning. It's fragile, or so you see it. And therefore, there are limitations, and all your protective instincts come into play. And then there's the metaphysical, let's say, aspect of it, which is that in many instances, 
you are simply creating a vessel for a soul to come and inhabit, to help populate the earth, to help usher a new energy, to help uh, rekindle humanity's need for self-love, to bring new knowledge and downloads and so on and so forth. And that's the purpose of the soul. So as much as you want to, and this is selfishly, but not in a, in a bad note, because we do have an element of self, so we're always going to do selfish things. It's natural. Okay, the negative connotations are from more of a westernized understanding of um, the spiritual self. You have a self aspect and it's okay to be selfish at times, meaning that you do take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others in turn. But when you, when you look at another individual with a notion of self and you project yourself onto them, then is when the problematic aspect of things begins. Because you, you start to, what is the word that I'm looking for? Imbue, embed your beliefs, your fears, your misconceptions, the things you've appropriated from life, from all your experiences, onto that other person, and you try to protect them, or to teach them, or to educate them, so that they don't have to go through all of that. But just because you had your set of circumstances, it doesn't mean they will. So when you look at the fragile envelope of your child that you want to protect from the ills of the world and all the pain that you've suffered, and you know, the world can be a dark place, the world can be a light place. There's enough pain to go around for 10 Earths. Right? So you're stuck here in this karmic cycle until we, we start to rid ourselves of our negativity or everything that leads to this climate that we're in at the moment. You have to consider the reality of the matter which is that your child may be more evolved, enlightened, older soul than even you. And may be coming with knowledge and understanding that you simply do not have, do not possess. So in many ways, they need you, but also they don't need you. And you have to draw for your own sake and for their sake and the sake of their evolution, a line in the sand, a clear boundary between the mother figure the parent, the protector, the one that's here to enable them to get the tools that they need, the nutrition, the nutrition, the physical, spiritual, love, nutrition. And you want to be the shelter and the, 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 the oasis of love that they need when, when they have a difficult day. And you want to provide them with that, that safety net. And beyond that point, you do not want to step. And that's really important here. Because as much as you want things for your child, you have to ask them what they want. And you'd be surprised that at an early age, they know what they want. We are often more connected at the age of 6, 7, 10, 12, than we are at 22, 25, 35. Because then we're already programmed. We've done the college, we've done all this. You know, we've done the, how do we say this? The self-fulfilling prophecy that was dictated to us by our parents. You need an education, you need to go to a good school, you need to marry the right person, blah, blah, blah. And we we'll continue with the BS. And here we are in 2021 um, with the same story on earth. So what my suggestion simply is to remove yourself from the equation for a second. To look at your child not as a fragile creature that you're here to protect from the ills of the world solely. To see yourself as a loving motherly figure that's here to nourish their needs and give them a good perception, a loving perception of life. But understand that they have their own path that's been already laid out by their souls. Whatever you want to meddle with, it's not really going to affect the outcome because they've already made soul choices and they're going to go where they need to go regardless of your actions. So if they've chosen a model, a mother that say in the past, a mother that's going to meddle, a narcissistic mother for their own learning experiences, that's been done already. It's not really about the mother. She's just a secondary figure in their design of life as much as she wishes to be the primary element. So if you're a parent that's aware and you want the best for your child, you need to respect their choices. And when you want certain things for them, and I hope it's not a career or anything like that because... We have to allow young people to choose what they want. They're here to change things. And, and the way that's been done, that things have been done so far, 
has not exactly proven to be beneficial for anyone, especially the planet and our society. So perhaps there's a, a brighter way, a lighter way, an easier way, and it's best at this time to listen and not to try to dictate or to push or to meddle or to try to suggest things that, you know, when you suggest or you go into the, uh, the smothering kind of aspect of things, it means that on many levels you don't really trust your child to make the right decisions. And in that way, you take away from them the right and the, well, the right of their soul to grow into a, its fullest state of being. And you remove from yourself the elevated perception of the child as a soul. So I'm asking you, or I'm imploring you, I'm inviting you rather, to consider these aspects. When you look at your child and you see their, their 3D body doing something, they did something quote-unquote wrong, and you want to lecture, you want to impart knowledge and so on, or they're at a crossroads in their lives, before you say anything, before you do anything, take a step back, take a deep breath, think about what they want, think about what they need, think about any projections that may be from your part on, on, onto them, Think about your necessity to protect them from things that have happened to you that may not necessarily happen to them. So that's projection in its clearest form. Think of them as a soul that's elevated and evolved and, and has already chosen its path as much as you want to be an instrumental part of it. You're here as a caretaker. You're here as an, a beacon of love. You're here to support, but you're not here to dictate. You're not here to direct. You're not here to exemplify any of those things. That's what a parent embodying universal love is. In the future, it's going to be the far future from the way we're going, <laughs> we're looking at a family structure that is more, again, reflective of community, of universal love, in the ways that perhaps two parents give birth to a child, but that child is raised by a community, it doesn't have a clear structure of mother, father, aunt, grandfather, grandmother, and so on. There's a saying, it takes the village to raise a child, and you know, that's what we're talking about. So the child gets a lot of different aspects from a lot of different people, and it grows out to be a more wholesome person, and it always, always feels like it has this community behind it, because humans stick together, and humans help each other. And of course, I do not feel like we are at this point at the moment. But perhaps the use of the world, the use of 2021, the use of 2051, of 61, of 2021 will impart upon us something new, a new knowledge, a new understanding. Okay. And as we look at what's happened with the coronavirus and the shift in society, the structure of society, work, money, education, you can clearly see that young people, um, as much as, you know, I've also had my qualms with millennials and so on, with people in their 20s and, and younger, um, with the social media and all this... Um, stuff that they deal with on a daily basis, there's a lot of things they're doing better already. They've already broken the stereotypes of LGBTQ um, notions that we had in the past and so on and so forth. And they've given us a more wholesome attitude towards life. They can show us that we can go and be successful or make money in 25 million different ways. We don't necessarily need to do the nine to five. We can be free, we can experience, we can do the van life. We can, you know, there's a million different formulas you can live by. They've shown us this. People younger than myself. I'm 37. I'm not, you know, 67. So I'm also learning. And it's important for you to learn from your children. So to sum, to sum up, um, we're looking at boundaries. You really have to separate yourself from your child and to enable them to do what they need to do, to consider their choices and not to believe that because they're necessarily young, that they don't know what they're doing, and also to allow them to make their own mistakes. Sometimes parents see a child in a relationship, and the relationship is problematic. It is not your place to meddle. It is a karmic choice. The person has chosen another person in order to learn something, to evolve. The more you meddle, the more you will alienate them. The less you meddle, the more you step out and you let them do their own thing. The more you will enable them to learn, and you just sit there and you say, I got you. 
You don't even use, this is something I, I learned, something very nice I learned from a parent I was working with. You don't even say, I'm proud of you. Because I'm, I'm proud begets the notion that they need to do something to make you proud and you're giving them validation. So you say, I'm happy for you. And that should be your last consideration for any child. Are they happy in a situation? So if you're a scientist and you want your kid to go to MIT, blah, 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 but your kid wants to be a punk rocker and it drives you insane and up the wall and you're fighting with them, you know, clawing at the walls every single day, um, you're projecting. And you need to step back, you need to check yourself really quick, you need to take a deep breath and you need to ask yourself, am I really considering what the, makes this person happy? We're not all built the same way. Some parents are very left-brained, some parents are very right-brained. So if you grow up as a right-brained child with a left-brained right, left parent, something that I can speak to, there's going to be a lot of um, adversity within the home, a lot of clashing. And that's exactly when parents need to check themselves and say, because I have grown up in a certain way, circumstances, decades, uh, where things were different, it doesn't mean that my child is going to have to live by the same way. That's the old school. The old school was your parent telling you, do this, do that, you learn this, you need to you know, apply your education to this specific trade, blah, blah, blah. All of this creates a, a progression of misery throughout the millennia and the centuries. And here we are. Okay. And young people are doing anything possible to step out of that. And they're right. We're here to learn. We're here to be happy. We're here to, to find balance and, and to evolve. And you have to also evolve as a parent. So if you're not evolving and you're not learning things from your child, again, check yourself. Okay, that's a very basic outlook. I've covered some of this stuff on the channel, but um, I hope it's sufficient. If you have any questions, you have the comment section. Um, do like, comment, and share the video, of course. Um, maybe I'll do a live on this. Anything, anything you feel is pertinent, you know, go ahead in the section and in the comment section. I invite you to subscribe to the channel, check out uh, Andy Go Light on YouTube, um, the notification tab, and so on. You're going to have everything I'm covering right now in the first comment and the description of the video. You can check out the website Indigo Light Love. We have the amazing courses Freedom from 3D Employment and Embracing Your High Self, which are guided meditations and tools and everything that you need to be able to liberate yourself in the manner that we've been discussing in this video. And you have the amazing courses we have on Udemy, navigating, creating the 5D experience, creating through consciousness, all of this stuff again in the first comment and the description of the video. Basically, all the tools, metaphysically and physically, because we're talking about implementation that you need at this time to liberate yourself from everything that is archaic and obsolete in your life. Check us out on Patreon if you want to be a co-creator for exclusive content regarding you know, the work that I'm doing here in the Azores, um, past lifetimes in Atlantis, pictures, just personal journey. Um, you can donate if you want to support us uh, through PayPal. Everything, again, in the description, in the first comments. And check us out also on Instagram and Facebook. And last but not least, if you really feel like you resonate with a lot of this content, you can check out Confessions of an Indigo Child on Amazon. You'll find all the links um, in the description, of course and on the website indigolightlove.com. Send me an email at indigolight2222 at gmail.com. That's it for today. I'm going to send you my love, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.